So Bernie Sanders had a heart attack a little more than a year ago as of today, and as a Bernie Sanders supporter, I will admit that I was definitely worried about him. You know, not just because of what he would be able to do if he were elected president, but as a supporter, I wanted to see him recover. So of course, you know, it hurt to see people online saying that they wanted him to die and to see, you know, for example, Kamala Harris supporters wish death on him. But at the end of the day, did it really bother me that much? Did I lose sleep over it? Did I make a video about it? No, because people are going to say things like that. Online, you are literally going to find every conceivable opinion for every single issue out there. And, you know, you're going to be offended if you look for things to be offended by. So, of course, you know, if you see someone talking badly about someone that you admire, then, you know, check out, take a break from the internet. Um, Tucker Carlson, however, does not have that same philosophy because he was really heartbroken at the fact that some people online were laughing at Trump's diagnosis. However, he wasn't even talking about those people for, you know, uh, most of this segment that we're about to see. What really offended him were people who had the audacity to point out that maybe Trump got COVID-19 because he wasn't taking it seriously, wasn't wearing his mask, wasn't social distancing, was meeting with people indoors. To point that out to Tucker Carlson is uh, deeply, deeply offensive. Now, maybe, you know, I'm mistaken Tucker Carlson for someone else, but isn't he the person that oftentimes complains about the PC police and SJWs? But here he is, getting overly offended, getting up in arms because his feelings were hurt, because people dared to point out the reality that Trump got COVID-19 because of Donald Trump. Across the world tonight, people are praying that we will learn good news about the president's condition. Over at CNN, however, we were told again and again that the president deserved the sickness that he got, and they trotted out the usual hacks to explain why he deserved it. A lot of people have been put in jeopardy by the uh, president's behavior. And now we've learned, of course, this morning that one of those people is the president himself. But he just couldn't get over the fact that in his mind, the mask equals weakness equals I'm not on top of this virus. So perhaps a bit of a shock this morning for Americans, but not necessarily a surprise. It is also the most vivid possible demonstration of the incompetence and the irresponsibility of the administration. In large part, uh, it's his own der dereliction is um, partly to blame for this. He chose to go out to rallies. Imagine. He just announced he was infected. He just got to Walter Reed. He deserved it. They didn't wait long. Of course, millions of Americans have been diagnosed with the coronavirus, probably people you know, probably people in your family. We can say that. Hundreds of thousands have died. CNN's expert panelists are saying they all deserved it. They must have. They were careless. They were derelict in their duties. If there was a lesson from the coverage of this, it's a very familiar lesson. The media class is willing to attack the rest of the country if they think it will hurt the president they despise, if they think it will give them more political power. And of course, it wasn't just the media. In fact, the official message of the Democratic Party is that Donald Trump had it coming. We all receive that news with great sadness. I always pray for the president and his family that they're safe. Uh, I continue to do so more intensified. This is tragic. It's very sad. But it also is something that, that uh, again, uh, going into crowds, uh, unmasked and all the rest, was sort of a, a, a brazen invitation for something like this to happen. Brazen invitation. He asked for it. He was dressed provocatively. That's what Nancy Pelosi just told you. Many other Democrats are echoing that sentiment. Rick, Rick Leventhal has been following this reaction from the Democratic Party. He joins us tonight to explain more. Rick? Hey, Tucker, there are a lot of people wishing the president and First Lady well on Twitter, sending thoughts and prayers for a speedy recovery. But no surprise, the haters are not holding back, actually saying they hope the first couple die. And Twitter says it's immediately removing those messages because they violate policy. Here's one from former Obama staffer Zara Rahim, who uh, shared this and then apparently self-deleted a post reading, it's been against my moral identity to tweet this for the past four years, but I hope he dies. Then there's Steve Cox, an independent candidate for California's 39th district, who posted numerous tweets wishing death on the president and then wrote, by quote, I hope they both die. I was talking about Trump and Biden, not Melania. She seems nice. And former Elizabeth Warren staffer Max Berger wrote, Trump has destroyed millions of lives. He deserves none of our sympathy. 
Some Twitter users have compiled a library of mean tweets wishing the worst on the president, and there are too many of them to count, Tucker. In a statement, Twitter says content that wishes, uh, hopes, or expresses a desire for death, serious bodily harm, or fatal disease against an individual is against our rules, and Twitter says it will prioritize the removal of content when it has a clear call to action that could cause real-world harm. That's a quote. Meanwhile, the president's tweet announcing he had the virus was his most popular ever, at last count, tallying 1.7 million likes, Tucker. Unbelievable. Rick Leventhal, thank you. Sure. If you find yourself rooting for someone's death, anyone's death, it's time to pause and take stock of how your own soul has rotted. We're all going to die in the end. And trust me, as we do, we're going to regret thinking things like that about other people. We actually debated whether or not to put that on the air tonight. It's so ugly. In general, our, our view is don't put things on TV that are that ugly. But we felt we should because it is everywhere today. Really, Tucker? Really? You were so offended by that that you debated whether or not you'd air it on television? I mean, I thought that right-wingers were against this sort of PC outrage. Isn't this just political correctness? Aren't you just acting like trigger little snowflakes right now. And what's astonishing to me is that he got the most offended at the most benign aspects of what was said. The media clips that he showed were basically people rightfully pointing out that Trump has put other people's lives in danger because he doesn't take it seriously. He doesn't wear masks. He doesn't take it seriously. That's why he got it. Now, you can say maybe there's this underlying implication that they think... He deserves it. But when I hear them say things like that, it seems like they're saying, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And they'd be correct. As president, you should be setting an example. But Trump was not doing that. Trump didn't just downplay the severity of COVID-19 for months, but he himself did not take it seriously when he has a bunch of comorbidities. Like, it was dangerous for him to catch it. And now he has it. And people are saying, well, look, we were telling you and Tucker Carlson is getting outraged because how dare they point out that Trump got this because he wasn't taking it seriously. Well, guess what? You're a really bad populist, Tucker, because 72% of Americans agree that Trump did not take the risk of COVID-19 seriously. So they're not very sympathetic. And you should know this. You should have your finger on the pulse as a so-called populist. But to point that out is offensive to Tucker Carlson. Interesting. Interesting. Whatever happened to facts don't care about your feelings. I mean, I think it's pretty factual to state it's not surprising that he got the virus because he doesn't take it seriously. But Tucker Carlson is offended. Oh, you poor thing. Poor thing. Now, what I love is that all of a sudden, Tucker Carlson wants us to take COVID-19 seriously. How dare we be so insensitive? 200,000 Americans have died. Yeah, that's what we've been saying, Tucker Carlson. That's why we've been wanting Donald Trump to take it serious, because it is serious. But now you're saying that the left and Democrats and the media aren't taking it seriously when they point out how Donald Trump hasn't taken it seriously? And it's funny that all of a sudden he wants to take it seriously when for months, Tucker Carlson, like the president, has also been downplaying it. Not only did he critique Anthony Fauci, but he downplayed the severity of the virus by citing two quack doctors that used a widely discredited study that they conducted themselves to conclude that the infection rates were lower than the national numbers that were being reported. But because Daddy Trump got COVID-19, now Tucker Carlson wants everyone to take it seriously. How dare you just point out the fact that the president got this because he wasn't taking it seriously. The call... I mean, he's supposed to be the more savvy propagandist, right? The, the more populist member of media. But you can see he's just batting for a team and he'll go to bat for his team. He'll be a hack. He doesn't care. He has no principles. Daddy Trump has COVID-19, so now we have to take it seriously. And what's weird is that he got seemingly the most offended at what Nancy Pelosi said, when she stated very clearly she wants him to do better, she's praying for him, but because she said that um, his behavior has been irresponsible, he said that that's so bad, it's comparable to rape apologia. 
He literally said, oh, maybe he was asking for it because he was dressed provocatively. You're comparing Nancy Pelosi's comments where she wishes the president, president well, but points out that he's been irresponsible to rape Apologia? Tucker Carlson is a fucking moron. And he's not just a moron. He's a snowflake moron. He's a triggered little baby moron to be offended by something that doesn't even matter. But when they actually got to the comments where people said they want the president to die, what does he do? Then he starts celebrating Twitter censorship and becomes the SJW that he often criticizes because the person who he was interviewing said, well, you know, what? we're banning people who um, uh, say anything negative or wish death upon the president. Okay, so you support this. Why weren't you speaking out when Ilhan Omar was receiving death threats? Twitter wasn't banning anyone who was coming after Ilhan Omar after a crowd of Trump supporters at a rally chanted, send her back. But now all of a sudden, when you're offended, you're okay with censorship. You're okay with deplatforming. Only because you're the one who's offended. Your outrage is wholly legitimate and justified. But anyone else's outrage ever is bad and they're being snowflakes and they're too politically correct. Of course. Tucker Carlson is a hypocrite of the highest order. And I want you all to remember this the next time he does a segment about college students on campuses supposedly being too outraged whenever he claims that the mob and their political correctness is ruining American society. Whenever he brings that up, throw this in his face. Him being a little snowflake baby because people very tepidly criticized the president on the media. I mean, give me a fucking break. This is what I'd like to call an SJW if I've ever seen one, right? He's not a social justice warrior because he doesn't care about social justice, but he's a social injustice warrior. He's the right-wing equivalent to an SJW to where he, you know, can get offended and call for deplatforming and censorship, and that's okay. But if you do that on the left, you're a bad person. Yeah, Tucker Carlson is a fraud, and if you don't see that by now, you're never going to see it because he's given you more than enough to know who he really is. Tremendous, 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 tremendous